Another ship move in and still working on it. Yeah, you guys keep working over. We're going to launch on this. Roger. Okay, I guess it's going down. Roger. This is an audio slate for guide H19. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> Let me start this over. <laughs> this is an audio slate for H1898. UTC time is 145703 mark. Yep, I'll switch. Go for it. You can turn off mini juice for a second. Mm -hmm. Let me know when I can turn it back on. Thank you.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our second dive of the Lu'ua'ea Ahiki Ke Kualono Kai Expedition. We are just now launching. It is, let's see, about 5 o'clock in the morning, Hawaiian Standard Time. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be exploring the flank of unnamed seamount G today. We're going to be diving to an approximate depth of 3,656 meters. We'll be starting introductions soon. Are you happy for me to put Mini Zeus back up? Okay, thanks. Good morning and aloha. This is your dive watch lead, Megan Putz from the University of Hawaii. We are going to start our interjections this morning for our blue water watch. Please enjoy the squid TV. To my right, I have our data logger. Good morning. This is Corley Rodriguez. And to my left, we have our science communication fellow. Hello, this is Abraham Carrington. In our front row, we have our magnificent ROV team. Trevor. Antonella. And video? Uh, Aaron Rainey. Do you want me to do other other Aaron too? I can pretend I'm her. And then we have our navigator who just stepped out. Aaron Heffron. That is not how she would say it. <laughs> She'll be back. We are just heading down to the bottom. It's going to be a while. But fortunately, there's lots of squids. That is some optimism. We are always optimistic here on Team Blue Water. Yeah, we might see the bottom. We might. Optimism. We'll absolutely see the bottom. <laughs> Maybe yeah, not on our watch. Oh, we'll see. yeah, that's a bigger question. We will eventually see the bottom. Yeah, so there's a question in the chat, how long till we reach bottom? It's gonna be a couple hours. A suggestion for team names, sea fans. That would be <laughs> if we ever get to not do blue water. Got a question about the weather. It is not raining here. We've just got some wild waves. They've been pretty consistent through the whole trip. Yeah, we were having some.
some trouble with the current on our launch today, but it's not a problem. We are heading down to the bottom. Just uh you know, keeps things interesting. So sometimes the weather might look beautiful, might be sun might be out, but it doesn't mean it's good dive weather. Because what we're concerned about is the weather in the ocean. Do we know how far we are from Seamount C? That would be a good question for our navigator from the when she gets back. You say? Oh, that's right, Aaron's not. Yeah, from Seamount C, just the distance. Oh, C, I don't know. Yeah, uh, we'll it was ask about Aaron four kilometers, back. I think, um, if we went in a straight line. Uh, last night, we transited from Seamount C, sort of filling in some mapping gaps on our way here to Seamount G. That gave us all a little extra time to sleep, some extra time to do a little maintenance, um, and then fill in these really important gaps in our mapping. That'll help us for later dives when we want to dive on some of the other seamounts in this chain. Not much going on with the map right now. It's a blue with a bunch of lines. <laughs> ah, I caught a squid. Are we going Telecaster fishing? Yeah. It's, uh, it's my new game. While well, we watch this beautiful swath of blue, you want to talk dive objectives for the day? So our dive objectives for today um, are going to be very similar to what we did yesterday. We are transiting... Um, from a deep part of Seamount G to the summit of Seamount G, uh, looking for some good crusty rocks for our geologists. We are gonna collect some water samples for eDNA and for uh, geology. And we are also going to be looking for um, unique biology. So we have a little wish list of animals um, that we're gonna keep an eye out for. These animals uh, have been spotted before, but Weren't, we weren't able to collect them at the time. Um, and then we're also going to keep our eyes out for something new and unexpected that's never been seen before. Uh, it's really likely that we'll see animals that no one has ever seen. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, that fish was fast. Lorelei, what are you going to do with those deliciously crusty rocks? Oh, how did the, uh, did you uh, have fun with the samples last night? I did. They it was all really wet. <laughs> they don't tell you about that when you practice. Not on a boat that it's going to be so wet. You weren't aware that if you were on a boat, you might have a chance of getting completely drenched. 
No. I want to give your school a phone call because uh, <laughs> they seem to have missed a few things. <laughs> Well, along the lines of sample processing last night, uh, we had quite a few good samples come aboard. And they've all been preserved and are ready to be sent to the repositories when we get back. That's really exciting. Um, you guys weren't with us. We collected a couple different kinds of coral. We got a um, chrysogorgic coral. Um, there was a cup coral on one of our rock samples. That was really cool. And we collected a piece of sponge. We collected a couple sea cucumbers. One came back in really amazing condition and the other one yeah, was a little more difficult uh, to preserve just because of how, how fragile it was. We had a really cool sea star a solasterid that was preserved. So I think we're going to have a lot of happy taxonomists when we get to shore. Oh no, it's too fast. Oh, speaking of probably those uh, sea cucumbers, but any of the samples that we collected yesterday, um, how are we um, preserving them? Are we doing gas, deep freeze? How's that working? So we are preserving the samples in 95% ethanol. And then for the sea cucumbers, um, the ones that uh, are going to be used for the study at the University of Hawaii are being frozen. Right, because it's uh, talk, uh, studying the stomach contents, right? So we don't want to mess up those contents with the ethanol, correct? Exactly. Yeah, the, the goal is to keep that, that stomach um, and gut content intact until it can be properly dissected. It was sloshing around. Because these animals are so fragile, uh, it's possible that you know, it could get damaged. We've got a textbook question. What's the definition of bathymetric? Uh, bathymetry has to do with the um, uh, the topography, sea topography, so what the uh, sea floor or any water, floor of a water body looks like at the, the um, depths and rises. So right now we have no bathymetry to see because we are in mid-water, but once we hit bottom we will See lots of ridges and bumps.
or maybe not. Actually, no, we have to because we'll be on a seamount, but it's unexplored, so who knows what we're, what we're gonna find. Yeah, so our, our mapping can only do so much to tell us about the seafloor. We, we know how deep it is approximately. Um, some of the larger features are gonna be uh, captured by our mapping, but small things like, you know, is it a bunch of cobbles in this area or is it uh, bedrock in this area? That can only be really understood by going down and looking for ourselves. Yeah, in our first dive, we found that um, the sediment was, well, it, it alternated between being a lot of nodes, right, nodules, and uh, being solidly compact. So we couldn't have gotten that from our um, from our mapping data. Yeah, it's really difficult to tell hard substrates apart. Our mapping data can give us a little insight into if the substrate is soft or hard uh, based on the backscatter. But other than that, you really have a hard time telling exactly what it's going to look like. Everybody is really invested in our sea cucumbers. Um, did they come back alive? I no, yeah. unfortunately not. So switch from deep sea. Well, it's kind of like us switching from our normal pressure up here and then trying to survive in the deep sea without any sort of protection it doesn't work so well. Well, and then the temperature change really does affect animals. It's just so much warmer up here at the surface than it is down deep. Sort of like how we're all going to feel when we go back to the mainland from Hawaii. I'm a child of the cold, so I am looking forward to getting back to my uh, Washington State weather. Yeah, not me. <laughs> properly uh, fall slash winter there. I'm fully acclimated to Hawaiian temperatures. I'm very excited to not be in Rhode Island where it's so cold. Here I am, like, trying to find every super air-conditioned corner. It's not even that hot outside. It's just kind of muggy. Yeah, the rain will do that. Like Hercules is doing a morning workout, maybe? Stretches? Just a single wrist exercise. I like that enhance square. It's a fun thing. I don't know if the, someone's talking to the back row off SPL. I never know if they're it's on purpose or not. 
Are mostly you, not. Are you trying to talk to us back there? Yeah, sorry. I uh, have my microphone away from my mouth. Yeah, what's that enhance rectangle thing? I don't think I've seen that. It's before. a freeze and zoom function. Freeze so and zoom, okay. I can like capture things that are going by for a few seconds. Oh, can you? Yeah. Challenge. It's really hard. It's, a, it's my new game. Keeping me focused. I wish we had a little count in the corner to see like how many, <laughs> what your score is at the end of the dive. Oh, that wasn't a thing. There. Uh, it's some schmutz. <laughs> it only counts if you, you collect live animals. Like, it's... Oh, yeah. nice. Unidentified swimming squid. Yeah, I think that might have been a fish. But who Fine. knows? It's really hard to see. Yeah, we've gone, gone past the squid layer. Oh, what is the surface temperature of the water? I didn't look when we... Um, It's pretty oh. warm. Uh, it's around, I think, 20 degrees, so like 25. 25? Yep. Someone says it was about the same as the heated pools in Australia. Well, <laughs> yeah, um, the water in Hawaii is about the same as a heated pool. So it's nice and uh, comfortable. Yeah, it must be nice. It is. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I have a very sad story about trying to catch a crab off the Washington coast without any crabbing gear or I had like a plastic bag. It was a bad idea and it was October and the stars sounds did not align. <laughs> it was very cold. It sounds really cold. Plastic bag. <laughs> it was it was a plan doomed to failure. Well, what kind of crab was it? Oh, who knows? It was just like, oh, look, it's a crab. You know what? I have some time to kill. I'm going to catch a crab. I didn't. What What was the crab doing? Hanging out in the shallows and uh, slowly moving away from me. So like as I was building up the courage to step into this freezing water, it was just like, later. Yeah, and I bet it was teasing you. Or like, uh, this girl, she's trying real hard. Just move a few feet away. Few feet too many. Another bio sample question. Do any animals survive the ascent, such as like the little uh, microscopic worms or bacteria? Um, yeah, sometimes uh, we'll recover from the bio boxes and there might be a few amphipods or uh, polychaete worms that are still alive. Uh, that's happened before. Most of the time, the animals do not come back alive, though, especially some of our larger animals. Oh, someone's asking if we've done any real fishing. We were just talking about that a couple nights ago. No one has a pole. Um, no, not on this vessel. We, we haven't been doing any fishing. But, you know, we could write that into a proposal, have some surface sampling. got a question here about um, the potential of the sediment layers having manganese crust, which makes me think that Coralie should talk about her research. I am so sorry. What did you just say? Wow. I said we have a question here about uh, uh, the possibility of the sediment having a manganese crust. So I thought it would be a great time for you to talk about your research. 
Yeah, so manganese crust, so okay, let me try and explain what it is and try and answer the question. Um, so manganese crust normally don't, uh, they don't form on sediment. Um, you would have like a manganese nodule that could form around a particle of a sediment or something like that, but a crust won't because crusts form on hard substrates. Um, but we do expect to see a lot of manganese crusts when we're on the seamount. These seamounts are pretty old, so they probably have some good sized crusts that we can see. And if you were watching the last dive, you could see that there is definitely some sedimentation, extra sedimentation on top of the crust. The crusts are the black part and the white stuff is some particulates. Got a great question about ship life. Do we get much free time on board? I think it depends on what your role is on the ship. So, um, for example, I have two watches a day, so it totals eight hours. And then I also have to interact with classrooms throughout the day. So it depends on how many interactions I have as to whether I get free time or not. And it's not really free time since I have other duties to do as well. Yeah, there's always something to do aboard the ship, so most people don't get a lot of free time. Um, but it is very important to make sure you get enough sleep. You don't want to be, you know, too loopy. So we do try to make sure that everybody gets the sleep that they need. Yeah, so some of the science team when we are not on watch. Everyone has two watches, so that's eight hours a day. Uh, after we retrieve the ROVs, we collect the samples and start processing them. So a lot of us have to, after, in addition to our eight hour watches, data prep, do uh, some processing of samples. And then I am also taking two classes, so I'm trying to <laughs> finish my work for the semester in addition to taking a final so you don't a research actually paper. Sleep. no i don't <laughs> i think it was a span of several hours i came what the hell did i do i think i like came off watch did some work took a nap came back and you were still in the same spot studying for the same final so <laughs> yeah i try and make it interesting i like do some work for one class, do some work for another class, make sure my figures... Oh, I'm also presenting at AGU <laughs> on the ship. So make sure my figures are good, looking it over. So if anyone is going to AGU, you can come see my poster on ferromanganese crust. Give some cool findings. Do you have a poster poster or one of those cool e-posters? It's an e-poster. That's a fascinating bit of technology. Like, I was impressed the first time I had to use one. The first time, the only time I had to use one. An e-poster? Yeah, so it's like, you know, you have this kind of like the size of a screen, a computer screen is your poster, but you have multiple boxes and you can put whatever you want in those boxes. So each box can scroll, you can put an audio, a bunch of pictures, so Kind of like semi-infinite space poster. Well, that's cool. I've never had an e-poster before. I didn't know you could put an audio. Uh -huh. Does anyone who did an AGU e-poster know if you can put an audio in your poster? Not that I would, but... I did, because they're searchable for the rest of time. So I gave my two minutes... I think we had... Yeah, no, we had three minutes. My three-minute speech on my poster... And then I recorded it as well, so it's like anybody can listen to my speech as like an introduction. 
Well, that could be really nice, just because sometimes you're presented with a poster and there's so much information and you just want that sort of, you know, elevator speech of what is this all about? What's the most important stuff? So if you're out there designing posters, just a tip from an illustrator, a bunch of tiny text crammed all over your poster, it's going to get glossed over. So nice big headers, nice big text, get to the meat of the subject. Yeah, no one wants to read stuff for 15 minutes. Per poster. There's a couple hundred posters, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of posters. You don't want to miss anything, but at the same time, it's not possible to read all the things. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I have that much text on my poster. I have maybe, like, five bullet points. Nice. The rest are just plots and pictures. Appreciated. Someone in the chat hopes that everyone is having a good day. It's always a great day at sea, right? Thank you. I appreciate that. It's always a good day to dive. 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 I don't know if I agree with either of those statements. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to stay positive. Cynicism from the front row. Well, if it's a good day to dive, then it's we're having a good day. That's right. No way. Hey, I am gonna change so? my Zeus. Okay, give me a second. Okay, go ahead. Let me know when I can put it back up. So video Aaron, um, if somebody missed our awesome pilot whale from the last dive, uh, how long does it take for the highlights to be posted online? So uh, the video team on board actually doesn't compile the highlights. Um, they're sent to our onshore production team who edits and puts them together. So just depends on what they're doing and what other projects they have going on. And if it was considered a highlight by the by that team. Of course it is. It was our <laughs> largest what? specimen in four hours. What production team puts them together? Lionsgate? Wait, what's that? <laughs> what production team puts them together? OET has a production team. Mm. Lionsgate, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I totally missed that joke. It's way too early. <laughs> Indeed, fair fans, it is 5.33 a.m. So we are probably not not all here, but the sea will wake us up, right? Mini Zeus. Okay, awesome. I'll put it back on. Well, we've made it to our first 1,000 meters. Only 2,650 meters to go.
Megan, do we have any predictions about what we might see on this new, unex not new, on this very old unexplored seamount? <laughs> um, I bet we'll see something very similar to what we saw yesterday. Um, as we get to the bottom, it's likely going to be pretty sparse with uh, biological, large biological life. So we'll see a few uh, corals and sponges. Um, if there's a lot of sediment, we might see some sea cucumbers around. Um, associates with corals and sponges, we might see brittle stars, feather stars, um, and other echinoderms. Might see a few fish like rat tails and cusk eels. And then as we make our way up slope, I am guessing that the community will get a little bit denser, especially if we are going over an area that has a lot of rocky outcrops. Um, we'll be seeing bamboo coral, chrysogorgia coral, um, some primnoid coral. Maybe some Paragorgia, the bubblegum coral, uh, and some Coralliids. Uh, those are the, the pink coral or precious coral. And are there uh, hypotheses about why the uh, seamounts are more dense with population the higher up you go, typically? Um, so the the shallower you are, there's more food available. Um, as food uh, in the deep sea all comes from the surface. So as it sinks, it's going to be consumed. And so as you go deeper, you're not going to have as much food availability, which is going to limit the amount of life that you're going to see. And there just seems to be this really nice sweet spot uh, between... 2,000 and 2,500 meters where you just see these really dense uh, coral communities. Uh, and below that, things just tend to get a little bit sparser. Unless there's a massive whale fall, right? Yeah, and there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, and, you know, I could be wrong about what we're going to see. You never really know until you've been there. Uh, and since this SEMO is completely unexplored, um, I'm just making an educated guess on what we might see based on what we've seen in the past. So other seamounts like a seamount uh, like this one. And what's really interesting is since this is a seamount chain and these uh, seamounts are relatively close together, uh, it's likely that the communities here are, are connected in uh, a biological way. So uh, there might be animals that are genetically related to each other uh, across these seamounts. Um, that's why I'm assuming we're going to see a lot similar community on this seamount compared to the one we saw yesterday. But yesterday was seamount C and this is seamount G. Um, so this is the furthest south seamount in the chain. So actually it could be a little bit more different uh, than we're expecting. As we analyze the video after this cruise, we can compare seamount to seamount and see how they change as you move up or down the chain and see if there's similarities between communities at you know the same depths and how the communities at different depths are different or the same. And that'll help us answer a number of questions that we have about what the community is like on seamounts in the Pacific. And we can compare that data to other dives and other expeditions that have been doing similar work in this area. Excited to see what we'll see.
Here's an ROV question. So Argus is more like a weight, right? Being right, that's, you know, dropping down straight from the ship. And is her down thrusting this whole time? Yeah, the whole time. 100% down, kind of. Downish. Downish. About how fast is uh, is the descent right now? We're going 30 meters a minute. Half a meter per second. Not very fast, but it's also very fast. Geologically fast, right? Geologically, very fast. <laughs> Geologically? That a little shrimpity bob? Probably. We'll likely see a bunch of shrimps passing by, along with small little jellies, siphonophores. Potentially a new species of giant shrimp. That'd be cool. You know, you never know what you're going to see in the water column. This is the largest biome on the planet. And technically, we're probably seeing quite a few organisms as we go down all of these little specks. But exactly, there's a lot more here than what we're we're seeing. Um, we are descending quite quickly, so it's really hard to really focus your eye on any one thing. But if we were to stop and take a look, I bet we'd see a bunch of different types of animals.
a biology question. Let's see if we know the answer. Probably not, but that's what exploration is for, right? Is there an estimate of the ratio of known to unknown species in the ocean or a given depth slash biome within the ocean? Um, I'm sure someone has done some math to calculate a approximate number, but there really is no real way to know how much we don't know. Um, so little of the seafloor has actually been explored uh, visually. So we've mapped about 20% of the ocean floor. That's not a lot. Uh, most of the, that mapping effort has been around our coastlines. Uh, very little has been done out on the high seas. So there's so much more of the ocean left that we know absolutely nothing about. So it's reasonable to assume that there are millions of animals that we have yet to identify and see. But, you know, maybe not. You never know. Maybe we identified one twice accidentally. So that's going to throw off our ratio. Yeah, it's very, very much more likely that uh, there's much more that we don't know that we don't know about. Exactly. We like to think we know a lot, but the more I learn, the less I feel like I know. <laughs>